You know it's going to be a good video when I'm putting gloves on already. We've not even started yet. This thing. The Flum Me. Flu Me? Flu? I have no idea. What melon ice? It's 2% 600 puff. Um, load of bump on the back there if you can be bothered reading it. Um, I'm really excited about this one and I'll tell you why. This is the cheapest e-cig I have ever seen anywhere. Where are you going? I have never seen an e-cig this cheap before. You don't believe me? Well, here's the receipt for it. I bought two of them. I mean, look at this price, right? For some reason, they come up as high five disposable vapes, assorted two mil, 99p. 99p, it's a quid. It's a quid. And not only is it a quid, it kind of looks a bit similar to something. If you're uh, a little bit educated in slightly illegal stuff, you might know what I'm referring to. But um, I'm not going to say any more than that. But just the shape, the design. I mean, look at it. Now, I've got gloves on already because it's actually leaking already. Um, out of the mouthpiece. Like, I don't think there's any showing on the desk, but there we go. Um, yeah. No, you go. Go. So, yeah, I'm just going to tear this thing apart. Quick review, though. It, it's a, You know what? It's not bad. For the, it was a quid. And it's actually decent. For the price you pay for a quid, it's not bad at all. The flavour does drop off a little bit towards the end, but it lasts a long time. It's like... This lasted me about three days, amazingly. Fair enough, I wasn't using it as much as I have some other E6s, because yeah, I'm trying to cut down a little bit on how much I vape, but 99p, and it lasted me around three days. And the flavour's not bad. I mean, it's not the best watermelon ice flavour I've had. It is a little bit watered down, but for a quid? I can't argue with that. That's a great e-cig for a quid. And um, I know I don't usually promote where I get these from, but yeah, receipts already kind of shown it and give it away. A quid! A quid! I can't believe it's a quid. But anyway, we, I've done my review thing. That's all I'm going to do on the review. I'm going to roll up the sleeves and we're going to get into this thing because I want to know what's inside here there's got to be something in here worse than all the other e6 we've done so far to be just 99p so let's stop messing around i just want to rip this boy open and see what is in here oh just a side note as well i have ordered some new tools which will hopefully make it easier because uh, these ones are a bit battered and worn and they've got stuff on them so I've got new tools on the way, but I'm not sure when they're going to get here. Right, it looks like I should be able to just... Oh, how long is this inside? It... Oh, there we go. Oh. It's encased? Well, I haven't seen one like this before. I'm going to pull. That is compact. Yep, yeah, there we go. There's the leakage. Oh, I'm not surprised it's leaking. This tape is meant to hold the tank on. And look at the tape. So that's why it's leaking. Uh, plastic case. That's one solid piece. That's one solid piece. That's where the sensor was. I don't think we need you anymore. No. Go bye bye. Bye bye. Right. Um. That is actually pretty neat. I'm quite impressed with that. I mean, it's 
it's encased in plastic, but still. Well, I can already see I'm not actually doing anything to the tank and it's already loose. So I'm guessing that, yeah, it's not even, it's held on with tape, so that's some of the cost cutting. That's the tank there, and there's a little bit of something. Yeah, that's the top of it. There's the case. I've just realised I haven't actually isolated the battery yet, which is probably a bad idea, but um, I'm going to do this bit by bit. Can you come out as well? Yep. Yeah. Where are you going? So that's a little tiny... That's more like card. And it looks like the sponge, but it's more like card. But oh well, we got the rubber seal. Now the tank is now loose, so I should be able to just lift it off. Yep. I need to be very careful with that battery. So, right, the sponge is unlike others because it's one solid round piece I believe. I can't see any cuts in it. Usually on most E6 there's a line where it just click clicks on and wraps around but this is just push over the top. Right, I want to try and isolate that battery. Especially while there's fluid leaking everywhere so Start with a tape, that might be the best option here. And the battery is, no, we took that off. 3.7 volts, 400 milliamps. Is that what the box said? I can't remember what the box said now, let's have a quick look. It did say somewhere on here what it is. Or maybe it doesn't. I'm not sure. I thought I read it on here. No, nope, can't see it now. Oh, I just realised it's got a batch number and MFG. That'd be the manufacturing date and the expiry. To be fair, that expiry doesn't really last very long. That might be a contributor to the. Uh, the low price of these but yeah I don't see anything on there what claims the battery so we'll call it at that now if I pull you is the battery gonna come out oh right the battery is actually stuck to the pressure sensor which is stuck to this rubber bit so I can't remove it unless I get rid of this Oh. I just heard a crackle. Right, I do have my explosion ready here, uh, metal container by the side of me, just in case. But uh, I've got access to some of the wires now, so I should probably cut them off. Get on in one, quickly. There we go. So that's the sensor, which we'll look at in a moment, and I should now be able to remove that is just a plastic tub. Oh, there's actually writing on that. Uh, UKAE2982. No idea what that means. Right, I better just finish isolating this battery because it still has some connections. One arm. Cut. There we go. So, close look at the battery it is plus one three three zero zero three point seven volts 400 milliamp 1.48 watt hours so, and there is a serial number I'm guessing that's a serial number is there any protection on this battery for a quid I highly doubt it and to be fair we've not had that many width protection at the minute no I don't see any 
There's no chips. Nope, I don't think there's any form of protection at all on that battery. It is well wrapped, even though I've took it out of the plastic container, it's still got captain tape over it. So it's fairly well isolated. In fact, I just noticed that black cable, or the black wire, is still hanging down the bottom and yet it's still connected at the top. Just to be safe, give it a snip. And let's just remove that spare bit of black wire as well. Just in case it does decide to go boom. Right, we'll get to the coil in a second. This is the coil. Let's have a look at the sensor. And I'm guessing this is going to be one of the standard sensors. Ooh. That's actually in the... Is that glued in? That's glued in? Again. Oh, and it's not it's not glued in. Oh, it was right, it was glued in. You can see the remnants of the glue there. So it was glued in. That is different. Not very often we see one that is actually glued in. But this looks to me like one of the standard sensors. The positive, the negative, and the trigger wire. And yep, yeah, LED on the bottom there. Which in this case is a blue LED. And let's just make sure it is a standard sensor. Or if it's one of if it's not a standard sensor, is it one that's cheaper than a standard? No, nope, it is. It's a perfectly standard pressure sensor. Nothing real special about it. It's exactly the same as you'd find in any other EC. I actually priced these up today. What was... Um, not today, the other day. What were they called? There's a special name for these sensors. It's like a string of letters and numbers. But you can get like a hundred of these for one pound. No, no, not a hundred. It's like a thousand of these for a pound. It's so, so cheap. So, battery's there. Now, let's have a look at the coil. And the coil, again, looks to be glued in. This white stuff. See, I'm not sure it's glue or whether it's some kind of rubber resin which is holding it in place but uh, let's strip it off so we have it's not a mesh it's going to be a standard coil because we have a wick running through the center now on the standard one we should be able to do it like this there it is it's a standard coil looks to me like it's going to just be a couple of ohms and look at that burn in the middle okay so it has one two three four five six coils it's got six wraps in the coil are you gonna let me rip you off without ripping no nope. so as the cables are glued in I'm just going to cut them off so that I can hopefully remove the coil without damaging it too much. Now if I've done that right it should. Hey there we go. Lift right off. Now this is just a thing. It's just the two wires. Rubber cap. Yeah, that, they are glued in. I do not know what that is. But it's, it feels almost like a rubber. It's almost like a very sticky version of blue tack. 
But yeah, it's definitely there. Right, so let's have a look. Now we've cut that off. We should be able to see the coil in all its glory. We should be able to remove it. There we go. So we've got the outer wick. And we have the inner wick. And you can see quite nicely the coil there. I just want to try and uh, unwind it to see exactly how much is actually there, but oh, it's springy. There we go. So the wick is done. Here is the coil unwound. Very thin wire, I think. I could be wrong, but I think this is probably one of the thinnest wires I've seen in an ESIG. Again, don't quote me on that, I could be wrong. I'm just judging by eye, not by any official measurement or anything. And let's have a look at this centre wick as well now, because it does appear some damage on it. I should be able to unfold it. Oh no, I'm just tearing it apart. But um, you can see the damage on it, or the burn in the centre. You know what though? For a quid? This was a quid? You know what I've just realised, right? This is pretty much exactly the same as most other e -cigs. Your standard elf bars, uh, your YOLO bars, your... Um, there's quite a lot of the blue bars, right? Extremely similar to this, almost identical. It's just a different way that they're built and put together. But the components, the battery, the sensor, the tank, the coils, exactly the same. So why is this one 99p? And not ones like Elf bars are what, six, seven times the price of this? I don't, I don't know. I don't know how these are managing to get them for a quid. Unless it's just the brand you're paying for because flum me or flume me? Me. Me? Me? Mo? I don't know. The flum or flume me? Me? No idea. How are you doing it for a quid? How? All the other e -cig, the, the next cheapest e -cig I've seen to this has been 3 99 I think it was. You know, I actually like that case as well. I've managed to rip the insides out. And I've managed to put the case back together. So it's a case that's completely empty. And you know what? I actually really like that case. That is going to stay on my desk as a decoration. It's empty, so I can't do anything with it, but still. That'll live on my desk now. I'm just baffled. How are you a quid? A fucking quid! I want, like... Right, you know what, right? I've got all of these to rip apart yet. All of these. None of these are as cheap as this one. These are all really expensive when you compare it to this. Like even this one, the YOLO bar, right? Even this, it's a knockoff of the original elf bar. It's, even that was like five pounds. Five times more expensive than this. Yeah. But yeah, they're to come. That's the future videos. Um, I don't know what else to say. How is it a quid? In fact, I think I'm asking the wrong question here, aren't I? This was a quid. The insides are exactly the same 
as the most popular brands on the market. Almost the same anyway, if you use a coil and not a mesh or an arc. They're exactly the same. So why are the more popular brands more expensive? You are literally paying just for the name. Because <laughs> I'll be honest, the quality of this, for a quid, perfectly acceptable. No issues with it. It lasted as long as it advertised it's going to last. The flavour is only slightly watered down compared to the big popular brands, but you still have the flavour. It's nice. It works. It does what you expect it to. And it's a quid. See, so, so yeah, I know I don't normally advertise where I get these from, but hey, go home bargains. Look for these. Little red box, a quid. And they're just as good as your elf bars or your other popular brands. So yeah, home bargains. Roaring trading these maybe. Can't believe they're a quid. Right, I need to get over it, don't I? Right, so I'm going to end the video there. Thank you so much for watching guys. Make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well if you're not subscribed yet. Because that big tub I've just shown, all of them are going to get ripped apart over the next few weeks. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm planning a few explain videos as well. I'm going to explain the different types of coils and stuff like that. So, if you want that kind of stuff as well, hit that subscribe. And let me leave me a comment. Give me your opinion on this. What? A quid! A quid! Alright, I'm done. I'm out. I can't. I need to get over this. Bye!